Well, God bless everybody watching me. God bless everybody. I am super excited to be here. It is always an exciting moment to be with you and to come into your world with the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I hope you are excited wherever you are. If you can hear the apostle loud and clear, I want you to wave your hand and put a big smile on your face. Higher life to all of you. And new life to all of you. Welcome to the month of April. And today, we are going to receive a prophetic word for the month of April. Just before we close this service. So you better be excited. Hallelujah. Get your Bible. Get your notebook. Get your notepad. And fasten your seatbelts. Because today, I'm taking you somewhere in the Holy Ghost. Get your Bible and lift up that power up high. And that is your Bible, of course. And say after me, Say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I believe. I believe. It contains the word of God. It contains the word of God. Therefore, I am what it says I am. Therefore, I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I have what it says I have. And I will do what it says I will do. And I will do what it says I will do. Today, I will be taught the word of God. Today, I will be taught the word of God. My mind is alert. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. My heart is receptive. Ready to receive the incorruptible word of God. Ready to receive the incorruptible word of God. And my life. And my life shall never, shall never, ever, ever be the same again. Be the same again. Somebody shout glory in the building. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. You better be excited. I'm here to minister to people who are excited. You better be excited. And especially if you're watching on Zoom, because I can see you, you better be excited. You better be excited. Hallelujah. I don't usually ask people to share our live services. But today I want to ask you, to quickly share this live broadcast with somebody. And the reason being is because I believe this message is special. There are certain things that once you know them, what used to stop you will stop you no more. What used to conquer you will conquer you no more. So I believe this is one of those messages that will catapult you from one level of authority to another. So if you can copy the link on YouTube, I'm not sure if we can share on Zoom, but if you can copy the link on YouTube, put it on your Facebook, put it on your WhatsApp groups, put it on your Instagram story, and let somebody connect to what God is doing right this minute. And let me say this in advance. Today's message is going to be powerful. As you, as you can see, I'm taking my time because I'm going to teach. Hallelujah. I'll be teaching today. Apostle will be what? Teaching. God has given us a unique message and God has touched us in a different way as a ministry. We are to reveal mysteries and hidden things to the people of God. God has given us grace to access and fathom the realm of mysteries. Download them 
and bring them to the realm of men as revelation. So what you're about to hear here, most of you, I know you have never heard it anyway, but don't worry, I'll give you the Bible. We'll go into the word and hear what the Lord is saying in his word. Because at the end of the day, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 15 declares, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we are going to rightly divide the word of truth. It has to come down to the word of God. And scripture, interpret scripture. Hallelujah. So fasten your seat belts and be excited and pray that the Holy Spirit will give you understanding. Hallelujah. I'm not going to preach, but I'm going to teach. Hallelujah. Let me say that again. I'm not going to preach, but I'm going to teach. What is the difference? We know to preach is to declare or to proclaim or to bring into uh, a reality uh, certain mysteries, but in a form of proclaiming. Rather, is to bring awareness of realities and awareness of realities. But when we talk about to teach or teaching, is to give understanding. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, I will give you shepherds who will feed you with understanding. And those are teachers. So I'm here to give you understanding. What are we talking about today? Today we are talking about the mystery of a prayer shower. Let me say that again. The mystery. What is a mystery? A mystery is rather revelation or truth that is not yet revealed to men. It's truth but not yet revealed to men. There are certain things that belongs to God and that mysteries, those are secrets. But things that are revealed according to Deuteronomy 29, they belong to us and our children forever. So God is a God of mysteries. But whatever men access in that realm of mysteries and withdraws it, it's no longer a mystery but a revelation. That's why when Peter said, thou art Christ, Jesus said, flesh and blood did not reveal this, but my Father in heaven, because that was a mystery. Praise the Lord, everybody. And I told you that all truth, or all truths, carry value. Meaning, all truth is valuable. But not all truth carries the same value. The quantity of rice you put in a pot is not the quantity of salt you put in a pot. If you're going to do that, you'll not be cooking. You'll be just doing things that only you understand. Both are needed, but you need to know this is how much I put here and this is how much I put here. So truth is valuable. All truth carries value. But there are certain truths that once you know them, they unlock other truths. So I believe this message will not just unlock things that will not help you in your walk with God, but will unlock that which will be pillars or are pillars in your walk with God. Prayer being one of them. Say, I hear you, Apostle. So the mystery of a prayer shall well. Or the prayer shower. Some people saw us in our prophetic retreat and they were asking, why do you guys have these cloths around your necks? And what do they mean? Is there any meaning behind that? And I was surprised that some Christians don't even know what a prayer shower is. So I'm excited that God has released me here today to come and teach you. In this ministry, you will learn in a year what you did not learn. 
somewhere in 20 years. So let us quickly go to the book of Mark, chapter 5. And of course, I will read, uh, let me see, verses oh Lord, 25. For the sake of context, I will take it down to verses 30. Then I will jump and read verses 41 later. If you're still here, let me see you wave your hand. I'm still laying my foundation, so you better be with me. Hallelujah. YouTube people are sharing. We can tell. Uh, we are very close to 10,000, I believe. <laughs> Just half that, but we are very close to 10,000 people watching on YouTube. Now, watch this. The Bible reads, I'm excited, please. Just bear with me. And a certain woman, that is verse 25, which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. Verse 27. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. And touched his garment. Verse 28 will blow your mind. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. And straight away, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed. Somebody say healed. If that's your Bible and you're reading from your Bible, I want you to underline the word garment. Of course, yours might say hem of his garment, H-E-M. But I want you to underline the word hem of his garment or rather garment, right? Depending on the translation you're reading that from. And I also want you to underline verse 29 where it says, was healed of that plague. Was healed of that plague. But I'm more focused on healed, on her being healed. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched me? Who touched me? I want to know who touched me. And we know the story. But now, verse 34 says, And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. But before that, there is something that is happening in verse 22. Verse 22, if you can quickly go there for the sake of context. And behold, they cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus, by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And she shall? She shall. Come on now, she shall? Now, verse 35 says, While he yet spake, they came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? Listen to what Jesus says. As soon as Jesus had the word that was spoken, he said, saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, meaning fear not, only Believe, And I'll come back to verse 41 a little bit later. As a matter of fact, let's just work it out and preach like, and teach like we're there when it was written. Verse 41 says, And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha kumi, which is being interpreted damsel, I say unto thee, arise. May God bless the reading of his word. 
we are going to go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And when we are deeper in the word and in the Holy Ghost, I will take you higher. And your lives shall never be the same again. Glory be to Jesus, the King of Kings. Brothers and sisters, please pay attention because I'm about to work the context of the text and I will deal with the pretext of the text later. Where we have read the word of the Lord, the Bible tells us about a woman who had an ish. Not so much interested about the years and the period of her suffering but I'm interested in her tapping in the healing revelation that was so deep that even Jesus did not understand what had happened to him. I'm interested in her tapping in this type of revelation when it came to her healing. That's what I'm interested in. It will make sense. Let me take my time as I lay my foundation and build my argument. The Bible tells us that she had about the king of glory. And as she had, and this is what she said to herself. If only I can touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. You see, it looks like when you read it without revelation, it will sound like she was just interested in touching the bottom of his garment. When you read it without revelation, and when you read it without scriptural background, you would think this woman was just interested in touching Jesus uh, garment, or rather the bottom of Jesus' garment. Why will she specifically say, I want to touch the hem of his garment? Then this should tell you and I that there must be something about the hem uh, of his garment. Remember, these are Jewish people following Jewish traditions and Jewish culture. They knew things that helped them thrive and helped them remain in God. So she says, if only I can touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. She, you see, she's so sure that the moment I touch the H-E-M on H-I-M, I'll be made whole. Now, as a young preacher, Back in the days, I would jump every time I read this scripture. It would be as if my spirit wants to come out of my body because a level of understanding towards what the master can do was unmeasured. But as I continued to read back then, I then realized that there was nothing special about what this woman did. Let me say that again. As I read, I can see your faces. Trust me, when I picked up the revelation, that's how I looked as well. You see, as a young preacher back in the years, every time I read this particular scripture, brothers and sisters, I will, I will feel like my spirit wants to jump out of my body because a level of revelation was unmeasured. But now as you read and you read with the revelation now, as you go into the word, to allow the word to minister to you, you then realize that what this woman with an issue of blood did was not special at all. And why was it not special, Apostle? It was not special because she was not the first person to touch the hem of Jesus' garment. Rather, she was not the only person that touched the hem of Jesus' garment for healing. You see, if you are somebody who depends on sermons to know the word of God, you will not even understand what I'm saying. 
But if you are somebody who digs deeper into the word and just go into the word, you realize that she was not the only person. As a matter of fact, it was a famous thing that sick people did. They will touch the hem of Jesus' garment. So this woman, she was one of those that touched the hem of Jesus' garment. And there's a reason why Mark talks about her. Oh, yes. All right, let us go to the book of Matthew. Let me just, you know, back this up quickly and I take you higher in the Holy Ghost. Are you still there or you just went home? Matthew 14, verses 36. We are people of the word and we love the word. We love God's word and nothing moves us and shakes us uh, a part of the word. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, Zoom. I, I thought I'm, I was surrounded by people who love the word and who love mysteries. I, I think I'll just leave these Zoom people alone. I think they have another preacher that I'm not aware of. They are with me. Matthew 14. Please, Brother KB, wait for me. Verse 36 says what? And besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched were made perfectly whole. If you read it in another scripture, it says as many as touched the hem of his garment were healed. So Jesus' garment was touched by many people. So this woman that we just read about, really there's really nothing special about what she did. Are you hearing me? Because she was not the first person to touch the hem of Jesus' garment. But the Bible talks about multitude. The Bible talks about crowd. The Bible talks about many people touched. Why will many people Rather touch the hem of his garment, not wait to be touched by him. Why will people go for a crusade? Why will people go for a revival service where Jesus was? And instead of them waiting for Jesus to lay his hand on them, they rather went there to touch the hem of his garment. It then tells you and I that these people knew something that many of you today don't. They did not have to wait for him to touch them. They did not wait for him to pray for them. They did not wait for him to wave his hand towards them. They rather went and touched the hem of his garment. Either there is a, a certain revelation or truth that they knew that many believers today don't know. Remember, our Bible, I'm using King James 1611 approved, was translated into our modern English language. Some words were removed and some words were duplicated. What that means is some words, they sound the same, spell the same. As a matter of fact, they are pronounced the same, but don't mean the same thing. That's why it's very, very important for you to always go back to the original translation of a particular thing that you don't understand. Because sometimes to take it literal will cause you to miss the interpretation of that scripture. A horse today is considered or rather is seen as a pet. It's seen as something that once you have, you know, it means you, you, you have your life together. But in the days, whenever somebody saw a horse, they saw a transport, a mode of transport. Are, are we together? So what it meant then, it does not mean the same thing now. There are some words that were taken from our Bible and put into this Bible. Um, when, I say, when I say our Bible, I'm talking about the Geneva Bible. I'm talking about the Bishop's Bible. I'm talking about the Great Bible. Because those were the first translations that were uh, moved from the uh, Sept uh, Septuagint uh, translation into English. I'm talking about that. And some words, when they were now translated into other visions, guess what? They spelled the same, they sound the same, 
but guess what? They don't mean the same thing. So it is very important for you to go back to the original translation or to the roots of the word so that you understand the word better. So you and I, we see people touching the garment of the master. If I can have my handkerchief, that would be good. The garment of the master. Now, Mark, all of a sudden, talks about a woman who had an issue of blood. Now I'm about to take off, so please pay attention. But before that, Mark tells us that this woman actually interrupted Jesus. What do you mean, Apostle? Remember, the ruler of the synagogue by the name Jairus came to the master, came to Jesus and said, Lord, my daughter, my little girl, my little daughter is sick. As a matter of fact, she's about to die. But Lord, I ask that you come and pray for her. She'll be healed and she shall leave. And Jesus said, no problem. Let's go to your house. So now Jesus is on his way. Listen, pay attention. Don't allow anything to distract you right now. Because this is where it's all uh, 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 hidden. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. I want to see your hands in the Holy Ghost. Wave your hand if you are still with me. I told you I'll be teaching today. I won't be preaching. I'll be teaching today. So there we go. So Jesus is on his way to Jairus' house. But what is he going to do to pray? But who is he praying for? Or who is he going to pray for? A little girl. Now, there came this woman with a revelation. If only I can touch the hem of his garment. But remember, she's not the first one. So Jesus, a lot of people, touched the hem of his garment. Now, why would this woman do that? Why would this woman say such a thing? She knew something. Well, what did she know, Apostle? She knew something. What did she know, Apostle? She knew something. What did she know, Apostle? She knew something. She was a Jewish woman. And Jewish people uh, thrived in the words of the prophets. Example, the Torah, the Pentateuch. Whether be it minor prophet or major prophets. So they would read all the books of the prophets. And remember, there was one prophet that came Rather, that came before the coming of the Lord Jesus. And people considered him a great prophet, though he's a minor prophet, and that was Malachi. Remember, Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament. And between Malachi and Matthew is about 400 years. So for 400 years, God was silent, right? We all know the story. So they read the book of Malachi so much and held it with reverence. I don't know if you guys understand. And there's a reason why Jesus shows up after the book of Malachi. The, the problem is one, it's just you not knowing. And just because you don't know, it does not mean others don't know. The problem starts when you fight truth that doesn't exist in your reality. Now, in Malachi, the Bible then says something. Don't worry, I'll give you the Bible. Malachi 4 verse 2. Let's read and let's hear what the Bible say. Please, just, just, just follow. Just follow. It will make sense. It will make sense. Because you need to know where this comes from and why, as a Christian, you need a prayer shower and the mystery of a prayer shower. Malachi 4 verse 2 says, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son as you of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and he shall go forth and grow up as what calves of the what of the stall now I'll, I'll read that again but unto you that fear my name shall the son as you and and in the book of Hebrews Jesus is called what it's called the brilliance come on now come on now this is the son of righteousness. Are we together? He said, I'm the light of the world. John came to bear witness of the light, but he was not that light. Light of the world. Hallelujah. S-U-N, of righteousness. But that's not where the mystery is. Here's the mystery. 
with healing in his wings. Now, underline the word wings. I'm taking you now. It will look like a Bible study, this one. You know, when we do Bible study, it goes deeper. Now, we see healing in his wings. Somebody holler wings. Now, the word wings there is a Greek word, rather, that translates zizi. Zizi. Those who are writing, zizi. Right? Now, zizi kilamonska means tassels or the tassels. Now you know, some of you as I'm saying tassels, you then remember when God in the book of Numbers instructed the children of Israel to make garments with tassels, right? You remember that, right? But we'll get there. Don't worry. Don't worry. Because I know some of you, you know the story. Be like, ah, so that's why God instructed them tassels. Yes, the word tassels actually comes from the word zizi. So zizi means what? Tassels. So when the Bible then says he shall rise with healing in his wings, it says healing in his tassels. <laughs> I feel the anointing right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the word tassels, that's why you'll see our Jewish brothers with prayer shower, right? That prayer shower, uh, 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 the, 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 the thing then is called talith. Come on now. It's called what? Talith. It will make sense. It's called talith. But under the talith, or rather at the bottom of the talith, there is what we call zizi. There is what we call tassels. And remember, the son of righteousness shall rise with healing in his tassels. Are you still with me? Are you guys still with me? Are you guys still with me? Or you just left? I don't know. I don't know if we should continue or... I think uh, Lucille Quiver, just learn. Just learn. Relax. You can't just be asking questions. Just sit down. Learn. Now, that's the problem. That's the problem. People are not teachable. If you're not teachable, you're not leadable. And you'll never know anything. Sometimes, instead of asking a lot of questions, just sit down. Be a meek believer. Be, just, you know, sit down and say, Lord, I want to learn. I want to know. I want to move in revelation. And how do you do that? By learning. Hallelujah. Because some of these questions, they are answered as we talk. That's a very simple question that already I'm answering it. So, but just learn. Hallelujah. Now, watch this. So, the word wings there is the word zizi. Zizi then means tassels, right? Then the whole thing. Uh, let's go to the book of Numbers so you guys can understand. This is a prayer shower. So, what is zizi? This zizi is this. Uh -huh, I've got my prayer shower. Let me demonstrate this. So, this is zizi. Are we together? This is zizi, the tassels, okay? So, the whole thing is called talith. Then we've got zizi. That translates wings. So the Bible then says healing shall be in what? In the tassels. Shall be in the wings. There is a reason why in the book of Matthew 14 verse 36, the Bible says, and many touched the hem of his garment and they were healed. So when the woman with the issue of blood said to herself, if only I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. It's because she knew what the Bible said in the book of Malachi. So to her, she was saying, if he is who he claims to be, if only I touch. Meaning I will know he is who he claims to be if healing hits me. Because the one to come shall rise with healing in his wings. So his wings, it does not mean wings like that. It means dizzy. Oh, they are missing it already. That's why many touched the garment. I know some of you are hearing this for the first time. It was not the first time this woman touched, but there's a reason why Mark writes about this woman and goes deeper on her, and I will explain why. The book of Numbers, just hold on, don't, don't put it before me, say. It's, 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 it's contradicting sometimes. I have, you have to wait for me, then I go on. Uh, the book of Numbers. Are you in Numbers already? Not yet. Because I see a scripture there. What scripture is that? Yeah, we're done with that one. Uh, I need numbers. I want to show you them something quickly. I'm just passing by. Numbers chapter 15. 
And pay attention. I said you must have your Bible, right? It's very important. You know this, uh, this, this is our Wednesday service, so you have to have your Bible, right? It's a service. You have to have your Bible. You have to have your Bible. Uh, did I give you the verse or not yet? Not yet. But I said 15, right? I said numbers 15. Correct. Okay. Now, I want you to uh, pay attention to something right now. Uh, 15, Holy Spirit, help me. Verse 38. Pay attention to what the Bible then says. Verse 38. Please, everybody, pay attention. Are you using King James there? It will make sense. All right. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they, they make them fringes. Come on now. In the borders of their garments. Are we together? And of course, the word fringes is the word tassels. It's the word zizi. Are you here? Are you? If you read that in another translation, it will speak of that, right? And it says, in the borders of their garments, throughout what? Their generations. So we now know why the Jewish brothers are doing it. And that they put upon the zizi or the tassels or the fringe on the borders a riband of blue. That's why there is blue. There is a riband of blue here. That's why your prayer shower, some of you, pay attention, everybody. Pay attention. It will help you. It will help you. That's your Bible. That's your Bible. You read it. Don't let it distract you now. Right? You read it. That's why there is blue. That's why there is what? Blue. Because the instruction stated that it must be blue. That's why every prayer shower on the uh, 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 fringes, which is the zizi, the tassels, it has a blue wrapping. And that was not men thinking about it. It was God's instruction to them. And not only that, God made sure that it has that, but not only that, but also his word. If you read there, you realize, and it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. But if you read another vision, it will say, uh, 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 so that you can remember the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. And that is what we see there, the word of the Lord, those scriptures that are written on your prayer shawl. I know you can't see that, but if you have a prayer shawl, you will understand. So all these things that you see, it is not somebody, a person who just woke up in the morning and decided, let me put some few things together. No, they are very scriptural. And what is blue symbolic to? Blue is symbolic to the presence of God. Blue is symbolic to heaven. Blue is symbolic to healing. Come on now. Blue is symbolic to what? Healing. Blue is also symbolic to peace. Have you seen the blue sky? Comes your spirit, right? Exactly. Why when you go to the ocean, the water is not red? I'm sure if you see water that is red, you will not feel as comfortable, you know what I mean? The water is blue. Why? Because blue is symbolic to peace. Are you with me? It's symbolic to healing. That's why most people will go into the water looking for what? For healing. You see, that, that's why I always tell you, the more you know, the more you function. The less you know, the less you function. So you will see our Jewish brothers, right? And uh, they are women wearing and having their prayer shower. And you being you, you know, Gentile, you look at them and start laughing. And say, why do they have that? They know something that you don't. Are you hearing me? And there is a mystery that goes deeper than you think. And some of them, you see them with their keepers around their heads. Some of you see them with your mulke. Are you hearing what I'm saying? As you see them with your mulke, or you see them with keepers around their head, and you say, why are they doing that? Listen, these are people who believe in the Torah. These are people who believe in the Old Testament, knowing that the new cannot be the new without the old. And they understand dispensations. That yes, we lived in the dispensation of this, now we are in the dispensation of this. But this could not have been that without that. It's like right now, neglecting Jesus because we're in the time of the Holy Ghost. And say, I don't want to hear anything about Jesus. We're in the time of the Holy Ghost because Jesus is seated by the right hand of the Father. No! Without Jesus coming, the Holy Ghost would not have came down. Say, I hear you, Apostle. 
So it all comes together as a puzzle. So these people, please remove the scripture, please. So these people understood and they understand what they are doing. I don't know if, have you ever wondered why the flag of Israel is blue and white? Oh. I wish I could talk to. I, I thought the people today would be excited for this revelation, but I think yeah, on Zoom, I, I know on YouTube they're excited. I just have a problem with Zoom. I, I, I seriously have a problem with these people here. Unless today, maybe, you know, new people are just coming in and they are wondering what's happening. Zoom is for people who are alive. Zoom is for people who understand revelation. That's more like it. That's what I know Zoom for. Are, are, are you with me? Say, I'm with you, Apostle. One more time, say, I'm with you, Apostle. So we see that. Hallelujah. Let me put this here. So the reason why we've got the, uh, the, the flag as well, blue and white, the flag of Israel is blue and white, is because that revelation comes from here. So it's pattern right, are made or put together after the talith. Meaning its pattern or patterns are after Jesus' garment. So Jesus walked around with the talith around him. And right by the bottom of it, it was the zizi. Are you with me? So they touched the hem of his garment. It was not some clothes or anything like that. That's why they never touched the hem of the apostles' garments. Because it was not just a garment like anybody could put on. In a sense, it was not just a touching. That's what I meant. I, I, are you with me? They touched for a reason. Say, I hear you, apostle. I, I, I want somebody to hear me right now. Because I'm about to take you deeper. That's why once you understand the mystery, the mystery of a prayer shower, you understand what Jesus meant in Matthew 5 and in Matthew 6. And also in the book of Luke chapter 12, I'm quoting because of time, those that are writing, and you read from verses 2. Luke chapter 12 and you read from verses 2. When the Bible speaks about things that are said in secret, Right, And when you read in the book of Matthew, and then you realize that Jesus, two times he talks about closets. Well, I wish I could go deeper. deeper I don't know. You get you on, you get saying, Apostle, don't go deeper today. You get you is saying, Apostle, don't go deep. I don't know. Uh, YouTube is on fire. YouTube. Let's put fire emojis. If you're watching on YouTube right now, I want to see fire emojis right now. If you're on YouTube, if you're on YouTube, I want to see fire emojis right now. Our God is a consuming fire. Hallelujah. Fire is the nature of God. Yes, I might not be able to see you like the people on Zoom, but if you are on YouTube, go ahead and put fire emojis and I'm telling you, the devil is in trouble. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. I'm seeing fire emojis. That is YouTube for you. Uh, even uh, Zoom. Zoom, I'm seeing a lot of fire emojis. Somebody's really getting the revelation here. Fire emojis everywhere. Let's go. Fire emojis. Let's go. Hallelujah. That is YouTube for you. And God bless everybody that is on YouTube. And God bless everybody that is on Zoom. <laughs> Before somebody say, what about us, Apostle? <laughs> hallelujah. 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 So are you guys ready? Now I've taken you deeper. Now I'm taking you higher. Are you ready to go higher in the Holy Ghost? Now, watch this. Watch this. When you read the Bible, in the scriptures that I mentioned, Matthew 5 and Matthew 6 and Luke chapter 12, 
you realize that Jesus speaks about a secret place or closet or things that are said in a secret place, right? And the reason why Jesus talk, starts talking about how, you know, the Pharisees, you know, uh, do things to be seen and to get approval from men. But rather, as for you, when you pray, go in your closet, right? And then you hear another one says, go in your chambers. Another one says, private room. But if you read this in your Matthew's Bible, you then realize what Jesus meant. Matthew's Bible, not let's necessarily the book of Matthew, says there is a translation, those who don't know, called Matthew's Bible just as we have Geneva Bible. I will advise you believers. I know that a lot of preachers, you know, everybody advises you based on what they themselves uh, are able to pick up from translations. Uh, Geneva Bible is good for you, okay? Geneva Bible is good for you because most words are not uh, changed, so to say. They are translated strictly or rather straight from Hebrew to your English, not... Uh, you know, when we want to talk about um, an, uh, an apple, somebody says round, green, sometimes red. No, apple is apple. Uh, are you with me? Uh, are you guys with me? So there are Bibles that you need to really look into uh, as long as you want to study and understand the Word of God, okay? Uh, Bishop's Bible, contemporary, okay? Uh, ESV is good. I know most people love ESV, but you can't do ESV and not do the, uh, the contemporary. So every time you do ESV, have a contemporary here, right? It will help you to balance, okay? Now, so the word closet, brothers and sisters, does not mean what people think it meant. Of course, when, you know, time went by, some words, people had to put their handwriting in order for them to make sense based on how they understood the Bible. Hence, you have to go to the original translation. Then you'll understand. Hence, I quoted three scriptures. Now, pay attention to this. The word closet does not mean have a room in your house where you remove everything, and the next thing you have a desk and a Bible, and you have maybe a candle, or you have something there, and it's just you and the room, and that's it. There's nothing wrong with that. No, no, no. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But I want you to understand that not everybody has or can have in their house an inner room. Or not everybody in their house can have what they can call or what they can refer to as a closet. It then means if you don't have what you can call a closet in your house, you then have a, you don't have a prayer place. Are we together? And for you to understand what Jesus meant, you need to look at his life because he talked the walk and walked the talk. Meaning he preached what he lived and lived what he preached. Jesus himself will not go into a prayer closet like we read and pray. But rather, the Bible then says, and he went further. He will, you will find him in the mountain. But he's talking about a prayer closet. Why is he not in the prayer closet. He's talking about chambers. Why is he not in the chambers? Why is he always in the mountains? That even when he multiplied bread and fed them, then when they were about to leave, the Bible says it was about to be what? Night. Jesus said, go as I go and pray. And he moved and he went further. And he began to pray. But wait a minute. He told us to go to the closet. Why is he not going to the closet? Because we have studied the Lord of the life of Jesus. Those who did Christology will understand. We don't see him go to the closet. Come on, church. As a matter of fact, in Matthew 17, he's transfigured. He meets Elijah. He meets Moses. God speaks. He's not in a closet. He's on top of a mountain. Church, you're too quiet. I don't think you guys are ready for this. I don't think you are ready for truth. I don't think you are ready for revelation. We are now, what did Jesus mean? If you go to the Holy Land and you sit down with, uh, you know, a, 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 a teachers or a rabbi who understand the scriptures and ask them, they will tell you 
today, not tomorrow, that the prayer closet that Jesus is talking about is not a prayer closet where you go in and you shut the door and then you stand there. No, this is the prayer closet. So when you cover your face like that, you have entered a prayer closet. That's why you find them in the wailing wall praying. And why do they pray in the, pray, in the wailing wall? Songs, I, I didn't want to go there. Go to the book of Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 9. I'm just passing by. I'm not talking about the wailing wall. I'm just passing by. So when we say in the closet, that's what we are talking about. That's what the Bible is talking about. That is your prayer closet. So you can literally be anywhere and enter your secret place. You can literally be on a flight 40,000 above the ground, 40,000 feet above the ground, and you enter the prayer closet. You can be on a vacation and still have your prayer closet. Oh, they are not hearing me. <laughs> ah, they are not hearing me. You can be in the mall and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit says pray and you enter your prayer closet. That's why you will see our Jewish brothers covering themselves. They are not mad. It's not that they don't understand grace. You are the one who understands grace better. No. They know something you don't. And they read it from its actual translation. I gave an example. Things change. And when they change the translation, the meanings change. Today in South Africa, we have Sibusiso, which means blessings. Are you hearing me? then the children of Sibusiso will talk about Sibusiso, which means blessings, and some will not say Sibusiso, will just call him Sibu. But the moment they say Sibu, it changes even the meaning. It's no longer blessing, it means something else. So those who will hear Sibu will actually know the meaning of Sibu, but not understand that he was actually Sibusiso, meaning a blessing, and then they will miss the blessing because what they know is Sibu, and Sibu comes with its meaning. So that's why it's very, very important to always go back. When you study the Bible, there is what we call the law of first mention, where it was first mentioned. I said, what songs of Solomon? I don't even know why I'm going there. I was just passing by because I know people will see these guys praying by the wailing wall there and say, but why are these people touching this wall, putting their prayer requests in the wall? Why are they not praying to God? Are they okay? <laughs> I said what? Did I give you the verse? 2.9. Let me see what it says. Are you there? My beloved is like a row of a young heart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall. You see that? He looketh forth at the windows Showing himself through, right, the lighters. Now, the word the the Bible says he standeth behind our wall. He looketh. The word looketh there forth is the word to peek, meaning he peeketh. Yeah, come on, help me teach this thing. Come on now. Are you guys still with me? Amen. I don't know if they are. Another vision speaks about gazing. When he says he looketh, it's actually, it actually says gazing, meaning he's peeking. Are we together? Through the windows. So the beloved that actually the, the Jewish brothers believe, they believe to be Jesus. That somehow he's standing behind the wall. Ready to hear their prayers. Anyway, that's another topic for another day. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on a prayer shower. I'm on a prayer shower. Now, so when you see them, when you see them praying and cover their faces, it's not like they are running away from something. They have an understanding that you don't have. That's why we always tell you, you can only travel to the direction of what you know. You cannot know something out of the blue. Are we together? You only travel to what? To the direction of what you know. And whoever feeds you, guides your convictions, whoever leads you, determines how far you can go. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Now, I want to go deeper. So, we then know that, okay, healing in his wings, zizi, tassels, okay, hem of his garment. We now know, okay, we know. So, 
That was the prayer shower. We know the colors now. They are biblical. We now see, oh, okay, this is what it means, right? But here's what now will blow your mind. Jesus comes into the scene. The woman gets healing. Jesus says, who touched me? Right? She comes, I touched you, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, Jesus says, your faith has made you whole. But there is something that I want us to talk about, brothers and sisters. I know it's going to be deep, but I'm not going to get in trouble for this one because it's biblical. Way, you see, not that when I get in trouble, it's not biblical. You know, some of these things are mysteries that are biblical, but to understand now, you need the Holy Spirit himself to reveal them to you. That's why Paul says, I had things that I cannot utter. They are unlawful for me to utter. So there are certain things that God will reveal to you, yet they are biblical, yet they are in the Bible. The moment you share them with people, you'll be in trouble. So this one is something that anybody knows, or if you don't know, you can easily find in the scripture. Now, Jesus was a rabbi. Remember, a man called Nicodemus, rabbi. People address Jesus as rabbi, right? Now, the Leviticus law says something. It says a woman who's bleeding is unclean. And whatever she touches is unclean. It will make sense. So this woman, she was not allowed to even go to the public because of what? The Leviticus law. But she went out not just to the public, but she went and touched a rabbi. And when she touched a rabbi, Jesus says, who touched me? For I felt virtue leaving me. I felt life come out of me. And this woman comes. She then confesses, right? I know what you might think. I know what you might think. You think, but how can she make Jesus unclean? No, she did not make the son of God unclean. It's impossible. But the rabbi, according to the Leviticus law, she had touched the rabbi and she had made the rabbi unclean. But why would Jesus still take that? Wait, let me take you higher. Jesus was on his way. Pay attention now. If you don't hear me here, chances are, and I'm saying this with humility, you might hear this in 20 years. This might make sense in 20 years, and I'm not joking with you. A man of God preached in 2012. I only understood what he say, was saying in 2019. Seven years late. So please, don't be like me then. Pay attention, okay? Jesus was not after this woman. He was going to Jairus. Jairus has a little girl. Remember that? Scripture tells us that. Who is sick? So Jesus is going to heal her. She comes. She touches Jesus. But she's unclean. She makes the rabbi. Not the son of God. The rabbi. Unclean. But soon after that, Jairus receives the word, don't bother the master. For your daughter is now dead. Now we all know what happens when a person receives bad news and things like that. Fear comes. That's why the first thing that Jesus said when he heard what they said to Jairus, fear not, only believe. Because fear is the opposite of faith. It is not doubt that is an opposite of faith. It's fear. Fear is the opposite of faith. So he says, fear not, meaning bring back your faith. Only believe, right? Jesus knows that the daughter of this man, the little girl, is dead. But he still goes. Wait a minute. Is Jesus not a rabbi? He is. According to the Leviticus law, a rabbi is not supposed to enter where a little girl is dead. I'm not sure if get, you guys are getting it. No, 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 no. You can literally see on Zoom I've got two people or something. I'm teaching you something right now. Oh, yeah. So according to the Leviticus law, a rabbi cannot go where a little girl just died. There is a reason why Mark uses the phrase a little girl. But the king of glory still goes. Why will Jesus go and f not really forcefully but still go? Is because Jesus already had received the ticket to go there. When the woman with the issue of blood touched there, the rabbi was made unclean. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you guys are getting it. Don't worry. You will get it. The Holy Spirit will give you understanding as you uh, flip around the pages of the Bible. So when Jesus got in there, when you go to the Holy Land and you begin to ask questions, you'll find these teachers and all of that. They will tell you that is. 
actually within the Jewish tradition that if a young girl dies, they will wrap, or even a young boy, a child dies, they will wrap the baby with a talith. So a young person, a young boy, a young girl will be wrapped with the talith. So Jesus gets in there, takes with him Peter, John, James, removes all the doubters. Because there were professional mourners, the injurious daughter. People were mourning. And it's in the Bible. Professional mourners. People were paid to come and start crying. Then Jesus takes everybody out. And he's left with Jairus and some few people. And then Peter, John, James. And when he gets there, listen to what Mark is saying. I believe it's the verse we read, 41 or something. I believe it's the verse we read. Listen to what Mark is saying. It's 41. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha kumai. Ayah. Are we together? Talitha what? Talitha what? Now, its original meaning is little girl wrapped in the talith rise. Oh, you're not getting it. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So the talitha there is the talith. And this is the talith. So little girl wrapped in the talith. So what, is, what are you saying, Apostle? So Jesus was saying, little girl wrapped in the word. Wrapped in the word. Arise. Oh, Lord. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. We, I wish I could talk to 10 people. Not a lot, God, just 10 people. 10 people are saying, Apostle, we are angry with revelation in the wind. 10 people. Not, you see, we have thousands of people, you know, thousands of people. And we are not live in, on all our platforms today. But the platforms we are live on, we have a lot of people. Are, are, are you here? Are you here? So little girl rubbed in talith. So it is very important for you to understand that in the olden days, that's why in Acts 19, you'll find that aprons and handkerchiefs were taken out of the apostles' bodies. And they were placed on the sick and the sick would recover. Why? Because those aprons, because they were in the body, or rather they rubbed the bodies or touched the bodies of the apostles, people believed that there was an anointing in there. And that was just an apron. That was just an, a, a handkerchief. Are you hearing me, somebody? So people will be delivered and people will be healed. And here we are not talking about aprons, we are not talking about handkerchiefs. We are talking about something that is biblical. Where God gave an instruction to the children of Israel to make this. And gave them colors as we have read in the book of Numbers. Are we together? So that they, this will remind them of his word. That everywhere they go, they shall remember his word. And not only that, if God is his word, it means a talith now, or rather a prayer shower, since we call it a prayer shower, a prayer shower carries or is symbolic to the presence of God. Because in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. God is his word. So this is symbolic to the word of God. Are you with me? So it means a prayer shower is symbolic to the presence of God. I wish I could talk to you. A prayer shower is symbolic to faith. It's symbolic to devotion. Ah, oh God. When you cover yourself with a prayer shower, you are embracing the divine. I'm telling you now. A prayer shower is a mantle of prayer. That's why even in the Bible, women are encouraged to do likewise. It's just that when things, uh, when time changes and things changes, they change with everything. They change with everything. It's symbolic to the peace of God. Remember the colors, we spoke already about the colors. The peace of God. That's why Israel has similar colors. Are we together? Most importantly, the presence of God. And I love it because one thing about a prayer shower, it encourages a believer to pray. Only the devil will fight something that encourages a believer to pray. Because he's the only person who does not want you to pray. 
That's why I always tell you, avoid things that don't boost your faith. Anything that makes you lazy in your walk with God, avoid it. Anything that tries to replace your prayer life, avoid it. But as for a prayer shower now, enhances your prayer life. Are we together? That's why there are other people who travel with prayer mats. And they have what they have to cover. I'm not going to mention uh, other people's religions here. But we all know them. And we look at them as if they are crazy. Listen, they are not. They know something. Only Christians are everywhere but nowhere. That's why there are a lot of Christians who are going nowhere fast. And I'm sorry to say that. That's why I always tell you that a Christian who does not pray will uh, experience movements without advancement. Let me say that again so you remember it. A Christian who does not pray will experience movement without advancement. And will soon realize that activity is not progress. That's why the Lord Jesus is calling some of you back to prayer. Are you hearing me? Brothers and sisters, in this world, even what you are wearing, somebody made it. Are we together? Meaning they are products that are made in China. They are products that are made in USA. They are products that are made in South Africa. They are products, reverend, that are made in UK. But a Christian who prays is altar made and Holy Ghost branded. And their sales point is power. And the devil knows it. That's why you need to understand that if you are not praying, you are actually in trouble. You are like a soldier. They put you in the forefront, in the battlefield, and you take your bazooka and you go, I'm not going to shoot. Just because you're not going to shoot, it does not mean somebody is not going to shoot you. <laughs> and that is how you are approaching the enemy. Just because you are not shooting, and some of you, because you are not shooting, God will put a burden right in your spirit. And sometimes he will put a burden on your spirit, because on your spirit means just on top, just on the side of your spirit. But in your spirit, it means inside your spirit. And when he puts a burden of prayer, now you don't know all of a sudden, you feel like praying, but you still ignore that. Not knowing that what you are feeling is to fix a seven-year problem that is going to take place in three years from that time. But if you don't fix it, it will last seven years. And when you are in it, you start praying. You pray because you are in trouble. And you know you are in trouble when you pray because you are in trouble. Brothers and sisters, we are spiritual people. Nothing was meant to take us by surprise. If only we can open our eyes, if only we can hunger for the truth, if only we can fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, and not only that, but hear his words. Because the Bible says, my sheep know my voice, and they hear me. But you can only, right, know his voice because you have spent time with him. Any sheep that has not spent time with its shepherd cannot know the voice of the shepherd. But how do you spend time with the shepherd? You spend time with the shepherd by going deeper into the word. Are you hearing me? And you, as you go deeper into the word, you then realize that going to church and salvation is not the end of it, but just the beginning of it. That's why I always tell you, salvation will get you to heaven, will guarantee you heaven. But revelation will bring heaven to you. 
Why will God want you to have mentions? Some people, some preachers, they say there are mentions in heaven. Please, there are no mentions in heaven. Why will God want you to have a mention in heaven? Walk in the streets of gold in heaven and on earth, he doesn't want you to be like that. Like seriously. As a matter of fact, if you study the word tassels, tassels, actually, they, they, it goes as deeper as blossoming and flourishing. Hallelujah. 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 I'm telling you, sometimes you might be in a position where you don't know where to start as you pray. And you just put on your prayer shower like that. And as you put your prayer shower, you feel something stir up on the, staring up on the inside. It will be like you are stirred up. It will be like something is, you know, it's like a car starting, like moving slowly, but it's going somewhere. And all of a sudden, it, it's as if it pushes you to pray. Never be deceived. Prayer works. Any person who tells you that you are in the New Testament, you are in the time of grace, you need not to pray, that person is sent. I'm telling you now, it's prayer or nothing. Prayerlessness, according to the book of Samuel, is even a sin. It's in your Bible. It's in your Bible. The way they are looking at me, some of them. It's just that we are in a generation that is not hungry for God, but hungry for what God can do. What the Lord Jesus taught his disciples before anything else was prayer. Was prayer. Was prayer. He said, when you pray, say. Didn't say when you want to walk on the water. Hey, hallelujah. Those things, they come because of something. You can't produce them if you are not somebody who spends time with God. Elijah buried his head between his knees until the hand of God was seen in the clouds. Until you learn to bury your head between your knees to be difficult for you to stand before men. Because any child and any believer, any child of God, who can go down on their knees, can stand against anything that will be sent towards them. A praying believer on their knees can see what a philosopher on the tallest, on, on top of the tallest mountain cannot see. Yet a believer is on, on, on their knees. Don't you know that when you close your eyes in the physical, you open them in the spirit. That's why you should never stop closing your eyes. Are you hearing me? The moment you close your eyes, and a lot of people don't know why Christians and why when we pray we close our eyes. And where is it? Like they don't even know how does it connect with the word of God. The closing of eyes. When we close our eyes in the physical, we are to open them in the spirit. Never be deceived. Prayer works. Prayer is the only thing that can travel and go to the future and wait for you there. When things are good, pray. When things are bad, pray. When you feel like it, pray. When you don't feel like it, pray. Brothers and sisters, is prayer or nothing? As a matter of fact, these young Jewish brothers of ours and sisters, their children, they know. Once they see the grandmother with the prayer shower, the moment is over their head, they can never disturb. They can never go closer because they know what it means. They can never even try to come closer because they know what it means. I believe, you know, when time allows and God gives us the grace, we will come back and then definitely deal with uh, different meanings around, uh, you know, placing your prayer shower. What does it mean when you put it on your shoulders? What does it mean when you put it halfway to your head? And what does it mean when you close? Now you know what it means when you close because we read it, we dealt with it, right? But what does it mean when you also wrap it around, wrap it around you? Hallelujah. We are just in a generation that has no understanding. And it pains me. It pains me. Listen, it 
pains me. It pains. There's just so much that believers are to know and understand. Either believers are fighting each other because somebody does not understand something. They are fighting. God is too big to be known by one man. That's why when it comes to the scriptures, I don't judge a man because of, I don't even, in fact, I don't judge anybody. But I don't use, uh, or rather, I don't use your accuracy or how powerful you are in deliverance or in miracles as a measuring stick to your maturity towards the word of God. After miracles, after prophecy, I will still judge your message in light of the scriptures. If it's not biblical and fundamental, then something is wrong. And that does not mean I'll come out and talk about it. No, I'm talking about me personally. Are you hearing me, brothers and sisters? I don't think the people, oh, the people are here. The people are here, okay. Yeah. All right, I can see you now. I was wondering, I, I thought what was just happening right now, but I can see you. Hallelujah. We are in a day. Imagine, I read something and I laughed. I read something and I laughed. I think uh, one of my brothers said it, and I was laughing. Uh, when did I see it? Today or something. I think I came across it today or something. And he said, um, if Jesus turned water into wine, in our time, others will have asked him, why did you turn water into wine instead of preaching the gospel? <laughs> I'm telling you now. Why? Because they just don't understand. They have no understanding. And I feel in my spirit, God wants you to be awakened. Go deeper into the things of God. Listen, learn. Some of you are called by God. But you are not capacitated. You are not even collaged as yet for God to commission you. Because when he calls you, he doesn't commission you, he colleges you. Learn. Go deeper. Do apologetics. Are we, are we together? Where you will learn to defend your faith. Where you will know how, what, and how, what connects with the Bible. And how what came to be. And what the Bible says about it. Because today, the days are dark, like Paul said. But I pray for you. That the Lord Jesus will be made manifest through your life. I pray that the Lord will stand tall through your life. I pray that your life shall be a testimony. They shall look at you and say, surely Jesus is within hand. Surely the Lord Jesus is within him. They shall look at you and say, this is the finger of God. I pray for you that your walk with God will have results. I'm telling you now, and I'm not just talking about cars and all of that. Well, that's not the blessing. Are we together? That's the product of the blessing. That's what the blessing can produce. That's not the blessing. But a blessing is a supernatural empowerment to produce with ease what men labors to produce. That's what a blessing is. That's why it says the blessing of the Lord maketh one rich and it addeth no sorrow with it. Why? Because it's supernatural empowerment that causes you to produce things with ease. And as long as you don't have the blessing, you will labor in vain. As long as you don't have the blessing, you will toil in vain. You will do things that others do and win. But when you come in, you will always lose. It's because you are missing something, and that is the blessing. And I pray right now that the blessing of God's word is resting upon you and your house. That is the right moment for you to receive. Listen, you don't have to wait for me to shout and scream and hit the ceiling. Right there, that declaration is what you receive with everything that is in you. As a matter of fact, if I'm praying for you right now, lift up your right hand and say, that is so. That is so. You'll be 70 years and still walk in abundance. You'll be 80 years and still see manifestations. That is so, that is so, that is so. 
I pray for you. That the Lord Jesus will be glorified through your life. That the Lord Jesus will be seen through your life. Say amen, somebody. Amen. One more time, say amen, somebody. Amen. So there's power and there's anointing in the prayer shower. And never forget that. How many of you have been blessed? I want to release a prophetic word. Just as this woman with an issue of blood, with the issue of blood, tapped into a revelation of healing like never before. I want this prophetic word for the month of April to push you into a revelation of progressive progress like never before. Sorry, because you can, you can make progress, but there's what we call progressive progress. Where progress leads to progress. And another progress leads to another progress. Where a door unlocks a door. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Are you guys ready? Amen. I want to say something here. And I believe Brother KB will capture it. Some of you that say the Lord to you. The opposition that you have been facing, that says the Lord to you, actually marks or symbolizes your position. Let me say that again. Your opposition, that says the Lord, symbolizes your position. What does that even mean, Apostle? Apostle Paul said, a great and effectual door has been opened for me. But there are many adversaries. Meaning, those adversaries were there because there was an open door. What then that tells you is that demons and enemies don't gather around closed doors. So your opposition determines your position. So once you see opposition, you understand your position. It means there is an open door. Hence, the enemy is fighting the way he's fighting. I don't know who I'm talking to. Uh, on YouTube, we have uh, over 6,000 something people watching on the tick right now. We know it's more than that behind the tick, but on the tick. But listen to me. Out of uh, maybe the 10,000 of you watching right now, I believe I'm talking to about 500 of you. The Lord is saying there is an open door. And in this month of April, you're going to walk through that door. And no devil from hell, no enemy from anywhere will stop that which God has for you. This is your season where even doors from unexpected areas will be opened for you. Amen. And here we're not just talking about ordinary doors, but we are talking about doors that will lead to other doors that will lead to other doors of greatness. Where at the end, you look back and say things like, it was worth it. Amen. Amen. You say things like, if God was not on my side, Amen. my enemies would have finished me. Amen. What that means or what I'm trying to tell you is that the doors that God himself is opening for you in this season will bring you into your season of rest. That is so. You will look for your pain and you will not locate it. I'm that prophesying. So. I told you out of 10,000 of you, I'm prophesying to about 500 of you. So I pray that you are amongst the 500 people that I'm prophesying to. You will look for your pain and you will not locate it. That is so. Just as the Bible says, and he sent forth his word to heal them. Right now, the Lord is releasing his word to you through me. That's and that word will bring uh, 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 results in your life. So. In the name of Jesus. I don't remember ministering to people. And people did not testify. 
Last week we saw that woman with a baby. When she came to our ministry and she has been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Now when she came, she came with the testimony. Yes. The baby, a testimony. You shall carry your testimony too. That is so, that is so. Just as people are testifying all over the world that the Lord Jesus is transforming their lives through this ministry, you are also going to testify. And I see and I can see and I can sense it. The first testimony will be, my life is never the same again. Spiritually, I'm making progress. I hear you saying things like, I'm moving forward with the speed of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Some of you, you have been delayed for a long, long time. But hear me and hear me well. No more delays. That is so. Hear me and hear me well. I speak as a prophet. I speak as an apostle. I speak as a man of God. No more delays. That is so. And I'll count to three. And I want you to say it with all that is in you. I want you to shout no more delays. I'll count to three. One, two, three. No, no more delays. delays. No more delays. Hallelujah. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Hallelujah. I want to release a prophetic word for the month of uh, April. Hallelujah. It's mom's birth month. It's a very prophetic month for us. Hallelujah. The fourth month. You know what the Bible says about the fourth month in the book of Ezekiel? I'm not preaching about the fourth month. I'm just passing by. The Bible says, and in the fourth month, the heavens were opened. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's in your Bible now in the book of Ezekiel chapter 1. It says, in the fourth month, the heavens were opened. I pray for you that heaven shall open. Your heavens shall be opened. That is my prayer for you. Hallelujah. I want to release a prophetic word. How many of you guys are ready? How many of you guys are ready here? Amen. YouTube, are you also ready? Because Zoom is ready. Hallelujah. And this is the right moment for us to honor God with what we have. Hallelujah. And I pray that as you sow and as you give, as you offer, whatever you call it, into that word, may heaven meet you at the point of your needs. And right in the area of your expectations, may the Lord meet you. Hallelujah. As you are partnering, as you are giving towards his work, I pray, may you never know lack. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I prophesy and I declare the creditors will not come. And you are coming out. And you shall come out as pure gold. As pure gold. Hallelujah. Are you guys ready? I'm excited about this. I'm excited about this. Are you guys ready? That says the Lord, the month of April, the fourth month in our year of greatness, is your month of abundance. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Expect nothing but abundance. Yes. In your walk with God, expect nothing but abundance. Yes. In your spiritual life, expect nothing but abundance. Yes. In your finances, expect nothing but abundance. Oh, yes. The Lord spoke to me and said, I shall increase them. I shall so enlarge good. them. Yes. I shall stretch them. They will accommodate that which they couldn't before. Listen, this is your season. This is your moment where God is pushing you into a land of more than enough. Because your understanding is no longer the same like last year. It's no longer the same like last month. Now you understand better. Now you know better because the more you know, the more you function. And I pray that as the Lord Jesus is uh, capacitating us, increasing us, enlarging us, you too shall be enlarged. Hallelujah. As we walk in this Mimshak anointing, the anointing of, of expansion, you shall also walk in the Mimshak anointing. Praise the Lord, everybody. And I pray that as you sow right now, this is our offering moment. And I will call it sowing because he gives a seed to a sower. Praise the Lord, everybody. And bread to the eater. I want you to understand that you are sowing on a fertile ground. Sow with a revelation. Sow with an understanding. Be 
intentional about it. Don't just do it. Be in I know some of you are used to just giving, but right now, be intentional about it. Hallelujah. And be expected. You know when you have put a seed on the ground, you check every day, has it germinated? Hallelujah. But here's the mystery of a seed. It grows uh, 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 two directions. Meaning as it grows up, it also goes down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you'll wake up every morning. Check if something has happened. What you are expecting. And that is the secret towards giving. So every time you give, good measure, press down, shaking together, running over. God shall cause men. Hallelujah. To come and give unto you. I pray that divine connections will locate you. Destiny help us. Will locate you. Hallelujah. I'm excited. I'm excited. Bless the name of the Lord, everybody. I am excited. I am excited. I'm excited. Increase is yours. Good health is yours. Hallelujah. Promotion is yours. Victory is yours. You, you are fighting from, from, from victory point. Hallelujah. Your victory is guaranteed. Your victory is certain. 365 days you are a winner in Christ Jesus. And I pray just as this season is a season of abundance, just as we have entered a season of abundance, may the angels of abundance visit you. May they not pass you by, but may they visit you. And the Bible says in the book of uh, Genesis 13, our father Abraham walked in abundance. Walked in abundance. He walked in abundance. Legged nothing. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Abundance is your portion. Poverty is not your portion. I don't know who might have told you what, but it is not your portion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You shall be the one giving to the needy. That is so. You shall be the one giving to the less uh, 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 privileged. That is so. You shall be the one giving to those who don't have. That is so. And it shall happen this month. That is so. There shall be salary increment. That is so. Salary increase in the name of Jesus. That is so. You shall find favor with man. Oh, yes. I don't know who I'm prophesying so. to. And you shall find favor with God. I'm talking to you. Take this prophetic word serious. Stop doubting what God is saying to you in this season. He's saying you will walk in abundance. Amen. You better open your mouth and say, thank you, Lord. Because you are going to walk in abundance. You are going to walk in abundance. Hallelujah. Like Obed idiom, it will be evident that God has touched you in a different way. Some of you, your prayer request after this will be, Lord, help me to remain humble. Amen. That will be your prayer request. Lord, help me to remain humble. Oh, yes. Because everywhere you turn, it will be a blessing. Oh, yes. You know what the psalmist said? The psalmist said, everywhere I turn is deliverance. Mm -hmm. He surrounds me with songs of deliverance. God shall surround you with songs of abundance. That's so, that's so. <laughs> Even in your dreams, you shall see yourself walking in abundance. In your dreams. You shall wake up and say, hey, Kalina Mahandra Veheski, Lintro Vahaya. You shall walk, wake up like this and say, God, hallelujah. Some of you don't be surprised seeing yourself catching fish in your dreams. So catching a lot of fish in your dreams. So hallelujah. Some of you, you will see yourself in a big field harvesting. Some of you, you will see yourself standing beside still water. Some of you, you will be flying on a plane. Hallelujah. Some of you, you just see yourself shooting up high, flying up high. Some of you will see yourself dancing. Hallelujah. It will be a sign and it shall be a sign that you are about to dance. Some of you, you will see yourself selling things, selling things. It's abundance, brothers and sisters. In your dreams, men shall come who will bless you. Men shall come and give you something. And you'll be like, what is happening? 
It is because God is saying already in the spirit is happening. Amen. God bless everybody that is sowing. God bless everybody that is giving. May this giving have a voice, develop a voice. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews 11 verses 4, and Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice before the Lord by faith that even angels witnessed it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray, just as it happened to Cornelius, and he had a visitation in Acts 10, may you also have a visitation. That is so, that is I believe that. I have been, listen, I be, I'm a giver. That is my life. My wife is there. She will tell you, I'm a giver. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And I know that no giving goes unnoticed. It's impossible. You better believe. So the mistake people do is they give and don't expect. Expectation is the mother of miracles. Miracles don't happen where they are needed. They happen where they are expected. So sometimes, you know, purposefully, you go in and say, this one is for my daughter who's struggling at school. And you lift up your voice. Listen, there are angels that they, are, that they themselves are responsible for just being witnesses as to who did what when. And when we do this in faith, heaven moves. And that is my prayer for you. Let there be abundance. Brothers and sisters, let even your siblings who doubt you, who doubted your God in this season, your siblings, your own brothers and sisters, whether half-brother or half-sister, even your own biological brothers and sisters, right? I pray that they shall look at you and say, what happened to you? And you ask, what do you mean? They say, but you have changed. I'm telling you now, even where you did not qualify, I don't know who I'm prophesying to. May you qualify this month. Where others are disqualified, may you qualify. Where others are rejected, may you be accepted. Where others are tolerated, may you be celebrated this month. Where others are laboring, may you be sponsored by favor. And I speak as an apostle. Anybody that is refusing your access to that which God has prepared for you. Let that person be visited by heaven. And let that person be visited by an angel of the Lord. And the angel will tell them, accept my child. Make sure that this person is approved. Whoever is responsible, be it visa, it doesn't matter, be it your resume, whoever is supposed to approve you, may heaven visit them. That when they wake up in the morning, they will not ignore your application. I'm prophesying to somebody right now. Be it a green card. Listen, they shall not ignore you. Be it a work permit. Be it a bursary. Be it a scholarship. They shall not ignore you. Some of them, your name will be imprinted in their spirits. That when they hold your documents like this, they will say, this is the name I saw in my dreams. Just like the Lord visited Abimelech, in Genesis 20 verse 7, in a dream, and said, let Abraham's wife, my prophet, go. And the king woke up in the morning and released Sarah. I pray. I, even the stubborn ones shall release you, shall release your things. Hallelujah. I'm prophesying to somebody right now. I said, I'm prophesying to somebody right now. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is gracious. Business contracts, I, I love YouTube. Ah, YouTube is, uh, is, 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 is for real. Somebody just said business contracts everywhere. Somebody said my employment is coming. I pray for you. Glory be to God. May it happen. Employment may it happen. Employment may it happen. So Stefan Mahoney may it happen. Duncan may it happen. Uh, Nanny may it happen. Buitumelo may it happen. Uh, Rebecca may it happen. Ella may it happen. Cattell may it happen. Everybody may it happen. Kennedy may it happen. Levang made happen. Lusanda made happen. Lucy made happen. 
Sylvia made it happen. Love more. May it happen. Everybody under the influence of my voice. May it happen. The month of abundance. Haya. 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 Good news on your phone. I'm not done yet. Ah, good news on your phone. I'm still prophesying to somebody. I'm still declaring upon somebody. Good news on your phone. Good news on your emails. Good news on your WhatsApps. Good news on your inboxes. I said good news. Good news on your phone. I refuse for you to wake up to something else other than good news. I refuse on your behalf. Say glory be to Jesus, somebody. Thank you so much. Even your relationships, God is restoring peace. In your marriages, there is settlement, I'm telling you now. Doors are opening even in that area. Some of you have been trusting God for something for a long time. The Lord is doing something this month. Hallelujah. This very month, the Lord is doing, and there is somebody here that said the Lord, you are a property investor. Well, you want to venture into it, and it has been a struggle. This month, he's opening a door, and there is somebody in here as well who has been in property but wants to take the business to another level. The Lord is saying, it's happening this month. Doors you did not pray for will open. In the name of Jesus. Kingdom finances. Get ready. Because left, right, center. God is going to show up. He will turn you into a wonder. And the Lord Jesus will be glorified through your life. May his face shine on you. That is my prayer for you. Have you been blessed? Have you been blessed? I said, have you been blessed? Amen. Hallelujah. Say congratulations to me in advance. Say it again. Say congratulations to me in advance. Congratulations to me in advance. It is done. And I'm also excited to announce that brothers and sisters... This Sunday, we are meeting in, uh, in Runbeck. Power for power, right? Amen. Power for power. I believe that this Sunday, we'll be worshiping like there is no tomorrow. Amen. And we'll just be in the presence of God together. And we'll just be diving deeper and deeper and deeper in the presence of God. The word will be on another level. Healing shall take power. Take place, touch, touch, take place and power shall change hands. Deliverance will be on another level. Be in the sanctuary. Run back South Africa. Uh, in Carsons. In Carsons, right? We are in Carsons. Run back. Run back is, you know, just in uh, part of Johannesburg. So you are to be in the sanctuary. And I'm also excited to announce that we have our school of prophets, seers, and dreamers. That is coming. Well, it's my first time to announce it like this, but guess what? We have a lot of people that have registered. So I'll advise you to go ahead and register and sign up. I think it's for three days. Is it for three days? Amen. It's starting on the 18th of April. Amen. Glory be to God. Last year it was May. Last of last year it was April. The other year it was May. This year is April, the month of abundance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it will start from the 18th to the 20th of April, online on Zoom. So you better be there. If you have not registered, go now and sign up. Glory be to God. Your life will never be the same again. If you're a dreamer, if you are a seer, or if you are a prophet or somebody with the gift of prophecy or the spirit of prophecy, or you are a prophet, you just want to learn more, this course is for you. Don't miss it for anything. Don't miss it for anything. And this time around, we are coming back with more power, power. This is your season to learn. Of course, there are so many videos that are for free that we have put up on, uh, on YouTube and all of that for you guys who can't access certain classes. So there are certain classes that definitely 
what we teach is very special. And not only that, some of us, it took us at least 18 years to know those. Hallelujah. And we teach them in three days. That is powerful. That is powerful. And your life shall never be the same again. And we had an amazing prophetic retreat. I'm sure you guys saw the pictures and the videos. And I, will, I pray that our team will put a full video on our prophetic retreat uh, 2024. Like the whole video. Maybe not really the whole video because it's like three to four days. It's long. But, you know, something that will just, you know, uh, you know uh, tickle your spirits and get you excited, guys, and just have an idea as to what the prophetic retreat is all about. My daughter case is here. We had people from India. We had people from Chad, Jamaica, Trinidad, USA. I don't know how many people came from USA. Even on this past Sunday service, we had a lot of people coming from USA to be in there. Even this coming Sunday, we have people coming from USA. Last week, we had people coming from Burkina Faso, Zambia, Botswana, you name it. We had people coming from UK as well for the retreat. We had people coming from Australia. All over the world. Hallelujah. All over the world. We had Japan in the house. We had Poland in the house. That's crazy, right? Jesus is doing wonderful things. So distance is not a barrier. Our ministry is global. And we thank God that he has led you here. You are part of this family. That's why you can go to our website and register as an online member of new life and you will have our team reach out to you and Some of you, I'll be meeting you on our membership classes. Hallelujah. Just to welcome you and to get to know you better. Because in that class is also meet and greet. Isn't that wonderful? It's wonderful, right? Yeah. We are a movement. Movement of the spirit. I love you all with the love of God. And may Jesus be glorified through your life. I bless you all. This teaching, I pray that it will catapult you from one level of authority to another. And remember to look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And God bless everybody. God bless everybody.